So, recently, I was reading the comments on some of my older videos. For those who may not be aware, I used to play a lot of Silent Hunter 3, and you can still find on my channel several of the uh, old battle videos that I did between various mod ships, and yeah, it probably wasn't very realistic. In fact, it probably <laughs> it wasn't really realistic at all, but it was just a bit of harmless fun, and it was just a, a what-if, really. But one of the videos I did was of the Greek armoured cruiser Georgios Averoff having a battle with a, uh, a German pre-Dreadnought. I can't remember exactly what class it was. Uh, it doesn't matter. The fact is, Georgios Averoff had this battle, and it managed to win. So Georgios Averoff is a uh, an old Greek armored cruiser. It's based off a uh, it it is more or less essentially a Italian Pisa class armored cruiser, with a few differences. Its main battery was 9.2 inch instead of the Italian 10 inch guns, and uh, a few other minor differences. Fact is, it was the heaviest ship in the Greek Navy for several years, and I think it more or less was the best ship the Greek Navy had right up until the beginning of World War II, even when they supplemented their fleet very briefly with a couple of old American pre-dreadnoughts. The Averoff managed to survive the war, she was uh, ordered to be scuttled when the, the Germans invaded Greece, but her crew decided not to, and they managed to escape to to Great Britain, and uh, she saw no action, I think, for the rest of the war. She was um, roped into convoy escort duties, but because of her age, she was uh, not particularly useful. She wouldn't really have been able to do very much. Nevertheless, she served throughout the remainder of the war, and she took the Greek uh, government in exile, I think it was, back to Greece, I think. The fact is, she had a fairly storied career, and she was in service, I think, right up into the 70s? I don't remember exactly, maybe that's the Yavros I'm thinking about, but... Suffice to say, Averoff lasted a long time, and has been preserved as a museum ship, and she's the only uh, armoured cruiser left in the world. Now, understandably, there is a lot of national pride in Greece for the Georgios Averoff. They love that ship. I mean, what nation doesn't have pride in their preserved museum ships? America has oh, eight battleships. They love the Iowas. We, I mean, the United Kingdom, my country, has HMS Belfast, the light cruiser moored in the Thames. We love that ship. We love the HMS Victory too. I, I can understand having national pride for one's warships. But the Greek national pride in the Averoff is... It's hard to describe, but let's say they kind of think it's a bit more than it actually is. Yes, um, the Greeks love the Averoff so much that they think she's a super ship. That Silent Hunter 3 battle video with the Averoff in it, it's, um... It's had quite a few comments from Greek fans with a inflated opinion of the ship, shall we say. And they say all sorts of wrong things about the Averoff because they think it's, she's the best ship in the world, and some probably think she could have won World War II all by herself. So I'm going to uh, debunk some of these uh, more outrageous theories, and uh, yeah, we're going to clear th things up and try and bring her reputation back into proportion. So the first wrong thing I hear said about the Avroff quite a lot is that Georgios Avroff is a battleship. Starting off simple, I suppose, Georgios Avroff is often described by the Greeks as a battleship. I think this is because of a, a battle she took part in during the uh, Greco-Ottoman War, I can't remember what the name of the war was, way back in the 1913, where she 
apparently single-handedly destroyed an entire fleet of ships. We'll get back. We'll get to that later. But uh, no, Georgios Averoff is not a battleship. She is an armored cruiser, and there's a fundamental difference between those things. An armored cruiser is something that existed before the more modern terminology of light and heavy cruisers. Before you had things like unprotected and protected cruisers, and then you had the armored cruiser. To try and keep things simple, the armored cruiser was essentially what the battle cruiser was before the advent of the battle cruiser. It was meant to kill other cruisers and outrun battleships. The Averroff was capable of about 23 knots and a, uh, a pre-dreadnought battleship of the kind that was employed by Turkey at the, at the time would only have been capable of about 18-19 knots. However, the appearance of the dreadnought type battleship and the battle cruiser meant that uh, armoured cruisers became obsolete pretty quickly and engagement ranges increased as well, from the sort of much shorter range that an armoured cruiser was designed for, to uh, the sort of medium range that dreadnoughts were capable of. Battle cruisers took the place of the armoured cruiser on, on the battle line. They were basically armoured cruisers, but better. They had similar levels of armour, more firepower, and they were faster. Germany learned this the hard way when they constructed the SMS Blucher, an armoured cruiser, their last armoured cruiser, and she was one of the more prominent ships lost before the, uh, the Battle of Jutland when she was sunk at the Battle of Dogger Bank. So, in a manner of speaking, Georgios Averoff was technically obsolete when World War I began, or at least obsolescent. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's something to think about. And just to cement the fact that Averroff is not a battleship even further, well, her armament and armour is completely un-battleship-like. Averroff's thickest armour was only 200mm, whilst the armour on the HMS Dreadnought at its thickest was 305mm. Her main guns were only four 9.2 inch or 234 millimeter rifles, whereas even an old pre dreadnought battleship used typically around 305 millimeter 12 inch rifles. Yeah, uh, it, there's no question about it. Averroff is not a battleship in any sense of the word. Fallacy number two. Georgios Averoff destroyed an entire fleet of Turkish battleships. Now, I suppose it uh, depends on what your on what your idea of a fleet is and what your idea of a battleship is. I mean, a battleship could just be a rowing boat with a machine gun on top, but no, we mean a, like a proper, you know, at least a pre-dreadnought battleship, because that's what Turkey had at the time, or I suppose more correctly, the Ottoman Empire. They had a whole bunch of old German pre-dreadnought battleships in service. Actually, it was only two. Two old German pre-dreadnoughts. And whilst one was sunk, it wasn't the Averroff that did it. It was a British submarine in 1915. This misconception well, it has its roots in the Battle of Lemnos from the First Balkan War, that was it, where Averroff and three of Greece's old ironclad battleships faced off against the uh, two aforementioned Ottoman pre-dreadnoughts. Now, the Greeks would tell you that this was an almighty battle and Averroff sank every single ship in that fleet. Um, no. In fact, Whilst the battle was a, a Greek victory, um, no ships were sunk on either side. There were a few damaged ships on the Ottoman side, but uh, none were sunk. In fact, I don't think any ships were sunk during the First Balkan War. So Averroff isn't a battleship, and she never even sank a single ship 
let alone an entire fleet. Whatever next? Fallacy number three. Oh boy, you're gonna love this one. Georgios Averoff could beat the Yamato. Yes, that Yamato. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, uh, what? How? Why do they think this? Well, one of the justifications I've read is that because the Yamato never proved herself in battle, that must mean Averoff would have been able to destroy her. But Averoff didn't really prove herself either. I mean, yeah, she damaged some ships, but she never sank anything. Nor did she ever shoot down any planes because her anti-aircraft battery was non-existent during World War One, and even during World War Two, it was very, very light. This misconception kind of goes hand in hand with the previous one. Those people who think that Averoff devastated an entire fleet of warships and shot down a whole bunch of airplanes that weren't there. Um, they think that Yamato would have been defeated because she didn't do any of those things. This is where that uh, national pride really just goes absolutely completely bonkers. I mean, I suppose there are a few kids out there who think HMS Belfast could probably have destroyed a whole bunch of enemy ships all by herself, but that's when you're a kid. It's not something you think as an adult. And yet, it would seem that there are plenty of Greeks out there who think that the uh, Averroff could do such a thing. Look, I love the Averroff too, but I, I know what she's capable of, and she certainly wouldn't have been able to defeat the largest, most powerful battleship ever built. Okay, uh, let's, let's sort of jump into some stats then. Let's look at the Averroff. Her main armament was four 234mm guns, 9.2 inches. She also had eight 7.5 inch or 190mm guns in four twin turrets, although she could only fire four of those in a broadside. The maximum thickness of her armour, as discussed before, was 200mm or 7.9 inches, and her maximum speed was 23 knots give or take a knot or two. And her maximum effective firing range was around 12 kilometers. I'm, I'm not entirely sure on that. The Yamato, uh, uh, sorry, wrong Yamato. The Yamato was a, uh, well, uh, so much better in every single regard, but let's go into her stats. Her main battery was nine, 460 millimeter or 18.1 inch guns in three triple turrets. Uh, yeah, um, that's quite a bit bigger. That's almost twice the size of the main battery guns on Averroff, but we're not done there because she has a secondary battery. As built, Yamato had 12 155mm or 6.1 inch guns, and she could fire nine of those in a broadside, and she also had 12 127mm or 5 inch dual purpose secondary guns. The maximum thickness of her armour belt was 410mm or 16.1 inches, but the armour on her turret faces was at a maximum of 650mm or 25.6 inches. And just to top it all off, Yamato had a maximum speed of 27 knots. Am I forgetting anything? Oh yes, her main battery firing range. She was known to be able to fire up to 25 miles or 40 kilometers away. Yeah. So let's try and break this down. Let's say Averoff and Yamato met in battle. Averoff would come into range of the Yamato first. So shells start falling around the Averoff, probably takes a couple of hits, and her 200mm of armour is no match for those 18-inch shells. So Averoff tries to run away, 
but she can't because she's slower than Yamato. So she turns to fight and let's say maybe she does get in range and she starts plinking away with her 9 inch guns which bounce off her armor or maybe they do some super structure damage but against her belt armor and everything else she's not doing anything bro so to any greeks who may be watching this video i'm really sorry to blow your ship's mythical reputation to pieces but it needs to happen because, well, she's not a world beater. Don't get me wrong, she's impressive. She was a good ship in her day, but by World War II, she was very much obsolete. She never really did very much at all, and you kind of need to recognize that. She's very cool. Don't misunderstand me, I love her too, but she's not the best ship there ever was. Far from it. This is Still Guns, signing out. See you in the next one, folks. Good night.